Do you want to start a business that you're passionate about and pursue your purpose every single day, but you just have no idea what that is? Hi guys, I'm Amy from Rebel Nutrition. Welcome back to my channel if you're new around here. I help nutritionists and health coaches create profitable online businesses by pursuing their passion and purpose. But if you're watching this video, you're probably like, I have no idea what my passion or my purpose is, like somebody please help me, because obviously that's step one if you wanna create a business that you look forward to working in every single day, right? So that's exactly what I'm gonna be sharing in this video is some of my top tips for finding your passion and your purpose and turning it into a profit. So the reason that I kind of was inspired to make this video is that I had a friend reach out to me and say, how do I find my purpose? Like, what do I do? I feel like I don't have one. And that was such a loaded question to me. And I was like, oh my God, like I have no idea how to even answer that. I don't know. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm living my purpose right now. I feel like I, I live such an abundant life at this point. You know, I'm able to travel the world. I wake up every single day and I'm genuinely excited about what I get to do, which is teach and make videos and really creatively express myself. But that wasn't always the case. And so I kind of backtracked a little bit in my mind and kind of thought about the steps that I went through to find my passion and pursue my purpose and turn it into a business so that I could really share it with you guys in a more kind of like step-by-step -step way. And really what it came down to, I'm, I'm gonna talk through like 12 different steps to really help you, you know, break this down and figure out what this is for you. But what it really came down to, I realized is that I think I've just kind of always had an aversion to doing things that I don't like to do. And I know that sounds really obvious and really like, oh, well, good for you. You just don't do things you don't like to do. But it's actually not that obvious. I mean, if you think about how much we are just really conditioned to do things our entire life, that we don't really want to do because we're trying to achieve some certain result that society says that we should achieve. So we're taught to like do all these things and work really hard on things that we don't necessarily want to be doing, even though they feel out of alignment. And then one day we wake up and we're like, how did this become my life? This isn't my passion. So I'm going to help you in this video kind of decondition some of those beliefs that maybe have gotten you to where you are and how to start really finding your passion and pursuing it. So if you're watching this video, you probably are already feeling like there's something greater out there for you that you're meant to be doing that you just aren't doing yet and you aren't living up to your full potential, which is like one of the scariest things that could possibly happen, right? Is to live your life and never live up to your full potential. At least <laughs> that's one of my biggest fears. Or maybe you find yourself like in your nine to five job right now, just kind of thinking like, this is not going to be my life. I remember like five, six years ago, I was actually nannying and I remember thinking to myself, like taking care of kids is not going to be my life. And like, this is a total side tangent for some people. And I'll get to this in a little bit is I really think that being a mother could be your purpose, but it is not mine. <laughs> um, so anyways, total side tangent, but let's figure out what your purpose or your passion is. All right, so the first thing that I really want to encourage you to do, and this one is gonna sound really obvious again, but start doing things that you love and start saying no to things that you hate doing. For some reason, I feel like as we grow up and as we get older, we don't have as much fun or like the things that we do for fun are like going out for drinks with our friends, but like we don't do the type of fun things that we used to do when we were kids and we only really work on things or spend our time doing things that we think are going to give us some sort of outcome, whether that's money or some other type of result. So I want you to really start thinking about doing things that you like doing, doing things that are fun and that feel really good because maybe those won't necessarily become your passion, but getting you into that higher vibrational state from doing things that are fun and make you feel good can oftentimes lead you to what your purpose actually is. Now, the next thing, and this is again, really simple, but really important is just to set the intention that you want to figure out what your passion and your purpose is. So if you have any sort of like faith-based practice, maybe praying or just asking the universe, a lot of times I do this and I will just ask the universe for a sign. And you guys, you can literally pick whatever sign you want. For me, it's pink butterflies. I just, I love butterflies. And then I wanted to make it like really specific so that I knew for sure that it would be a sign. And so the way that I ask the universe for a sign is I just say like, 
especially when it comes to making big decisions for me and I question like, is this the right thing or not? I will ask the universe to show me a really, really, really clear sign that's so obvious that I won't be able to miss it. So one time I opened up my email and this was so random. I was trying to make a big decision. I asked the universe for a sign. I opened up my email and what do you know? It was like a bunch of, it was like a gif of a bunch of pink butterflies in my email, which I was like, who sends that? That's really, really random. And that just was my sign that like, okay, this is the right decision. I'm going on the right path. I'm making the right decision. So you can make it whatever it is for you. Now, the next thing I want you to think about are the types of activities or things that you do that give you energy and the types of things that drain your energy. So if you guys haven't taken my free human design manifestation course yet, it's going to talk about basically a brief synopsis of human design every single one of us has a really unique energy type and the way that we process and use energy so i will link to that below but really i want you to start to look at like the types of activities that make you feel really exhausted after because if you think about energy and vibration staying in a high vibrational and high energy state is what is going to lead you to your purpose so if you're constantly doing things that drain your energy and make you feel exhausted it's going to be pretty hard for you to have the energy to pursue the things that you are passionate and purposeful about. So to give you a quick example, I kind of realized that doing videos <laughs> were something that gave me a lot of energy. Like even if I wake up that day and I'm exhausted, if I make a video, it actually makes me more energized. Whereas if I do something like a podcast, it usually drains my energy. And I'm not sure why they're about the same amount of energy if you were to look at them from the outside, but from the inside, one is expansive and one is draining. So think about what those energy suckers and energy givers are for you. All right, my next tip for figuring out your passion and your purpose is learning to decipher between your logical mind and your intuition. So a lot of times, again, this can come down to like when you're making a decision on whether to take action or do something or not. And you might think to yourself, okay, one option feels really fun and exciting, but then your logical mind comes in is like, you can't do that. Like, what about this and this and this? Or you've never seen anybody do that before. So like, why could you? And it's really subtle until you start to tune into it. But start to pay attention because of course, you know, the logical mind has a purpose, but a lot of times your logical mind's insight is not going to lead you to your purpose. Your intuition is really controlled by your higher self. And a lot of times the things that you're being intuitively pulled towards, your logical mind might be like, that's not gonna take you anywhere, so don't follow that. And a lot of times I think when we make decisions that are in alignment with our intuition, which are leading us to our purpose, it takes a large amount of faith to jump into the unknown and have no idea where that calling is going to take you. But a lot of times it will take you somewhere better than your logical mind ever even could have like thought out for you. So I know you guys, I know this video is like a little bit more woo woo than some of my recent videos, but I'm gonna probably sprinkle some of these types of videos here and there in with my like seven steps to build your website or whatever, because I think this part is really, really important too. All right, so the next step to figure out what your purpose is, is to think back to the types of things that you used to love doing when you were a kid. So I know for myself, I loved playing outside. I loved playing sports and being active and being outside when I was a little kid. And obviously like that isn't my purpose. Playing outside is not my purpose, but doing those things really gets me into alignment with what my purpose is. So for example, especially when I'm in Hawaii, I spend a lot of time outside. I spend a lot of time being active in nature and that makes me really, really creative. I get tons of creative ideas and I get a lot of energy from that, which then feeds into my business and helps me create a lot of content. And you can really think about this two ways. So you can do something because it's fun. It gives you a sense of excitement. It feels good. It will lead you to your passion, which in turn will lead you to your purpose. Or you can do something because, you know, society says that you should do it, even though it doesn't feel very good. You don't want to do it. Um, and those types of things usually lead you out of alignment. And over time, I mean, these might just be like small, small decisions that you're making every single day, but over time they really build on each other. And one is like, you end up living like this epic life and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so expansive. It's so abundant. I wake up and I just love my life every day. And the other is like, you wake up someday and you're like, how did I get here? Like, how am I doing all of these things that I don't wanna be doing? So pay attention to those little decisions that are, you're making every single day and how you feel when you're making them. 
Okay, next up you guys, I love this one, and that is to try some new things. <laughs> so I think we all kind of get into our routines and I'm personally I'm somebody who loves routines, especially after traveling for so long. But the problem with routines is that if you're constantly doing the same exact things over and over again, every single day, you're really living in a loop. You're living on autopilot. You don't really have to think about your decisions because you know the exact route to take to work. You know that you eat lunch at noon. You know that you go to your class at four, whatever. And it's just like, you, you never really have to <laughs> think super critically or make new decisions or experience new things. And the problem with that is that if it's not leading you to your purpose, like if you never do anything different, you're just going to keep getting the same result. Whereas if you're constantly changing the ways that you do things every single day, and this is something that I love about traveling, to be honest, is that you're really just thrown into the unknown. Like you don't speak the language. You don't know what people are saying. You don't know where you're going. You, the time change is different. That can be a lot of stress because it's so different than what you're used to, but it also kind of like makes this different part of your brain click on and makes you really expand your mind. And it can feel really scary and unfamiliar, but I'm sure you guys have heard this quote all the time, but it's like new exciting things don't really come from your comfort zone. You usually have to put yourself into a new environment, into a new mindset, into a new position to be able to experience these new things and get a new perspective. And it, it could even be a good way to learn some new things that you wanna try out. And also kind of on the same note too of trying new things is that I think it's so important to just be okay with being a beginner. I think that's where a lot of times as adults too, we get so stuck in our comfort zone is because we're not okay with being a beginner anymore. Like when we're kids, it's totally fine to be like, a beginner at this new sport that you're trying because you know that you're going to progress and get better. But when you're an adult, you're like, oh my God, I'm so afraid of failing or I'm so afraid of like what people are gonna think if I'm 30 years old and I'm not already a pro at something. So I think going into new experiences and new things with a beginner's mind and knowing that like, you're probably gonna fail. And that doesn't mean it's the end. It's only the end if you decide to quit. Failure is part of getting better and getting to the next step. I fail all the time in my business. And if I'm not failing, then it means that I'm just like staying stagnant and doing the exact same thing, which I mean is fine, but I want to continue to grow and scale. And if you're somebody who wants to continue to pursue your passion and live your purpose and create an abundant life, you're going to have to try new things and get out of your comfort zone a little bit. All right, next up, and this one is a little bit more like business related, but I think it's so important to visualize your dream day and then kind of work backwards from that. So to give you a quick example, when I was starting my business, I didn't really know exactly what my business would turn into, but I did know what I wanted my life to look like once I was working for myself. So what I mean by that is like, I knew that like, I never wanted to be seeing clients all day long. That sounded horrible to me, honestly. And I knew that I didn't want to be like working out of an office because I love a change of scenery. I like to travel. Sometimes I like to take afternoon naps and watch TV. Okay, so you need to think about like what your dream day or dream life kind of looks like and then figure out how to get that into place. So if you are like me and you don't wanna see one-on-one -on -one clients all day, like don't set up the systems in your business to be getting you to a place where you're only seeing one-on-one -on -one clients. You wanna create something more passive like an online course or a membership site or something like that. So I know that one is a little bit more like business related, but still you wanna think about the end results, like the most epic, amazing end result that you can imagine and then work backwards from there. All right, the next thing you wanna think about as you're pursuing your passion and your purpose is what are the types of things that you really lose time or you lose track of time when you're doing? I think this one is so important and this is like a whole different conversation about how like time is an illusion and all of that, but I really believe that to be true. Sometimes when I'm working on my business, I literally think that I black out like when I'm making videos or I'm podcasting or sometimes that I'm working on a, a course. And even if I'm like kind of tired when I first start writing, at, let's say when I'm working on a course, like three hours will pass and then I'm like, oh shit, like I forgot to eat lunch and I have all this work that's done and I don't even remember like what I just put on there. It's almost like I'm like the information is coming through me and I'm just like, kind of like the vehicle for it to get out into the world. So you might wanna think about what that is for you. Like what is something that you do where you completely lose track of time 
in a way that makes you feel good afterwards. So I think <laughs> the difference is like, if you're losing track of time when you're scrolling on Instagram or whatever, I don't necessarily think that's what I'm talking about here, but you probably can identify something like this in your own life. All right, so next up, when it comes to your purpose, I really want to address this idea of like, you know, when you find your purpose or your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. And while I do think that for the most part, that is true, there are some days when I am working and I'm in my purpose and it feels a little bit like work. I mean, but this is the thing is that I know that it's sort of like I have this purpose and this calling and it's like I can't not do it at this point. But the difference is between like working a soul sucking job, a nine to five job, which I have done before, and I would get home and be like absolutely drained from doing that and like knowing that I was just, I felt like I was wasting my life. And this type of work is that after this type of work is completed, it's like a sense of accomplishment and like I'm doing the right thing and I'm on the right track. So again, it's all going back to like, how the things make you feel. Afterward, do you feel drained and like your soul is sucked out or do you feel expansive, more energized and feeling like you're really fulfilling and living up to your purpose? Okay, so the next thing is I kind of want to talk about some limiting beliefs and I really want to ask you and maybe like pause this video and take a second to think about if you already really truly deep down know what your passion or purpose is, and you just haven't taken action on it because I think that that's, that's a huge, huge thing. And I think a lot of that, if that's true for you, comes down to limiting beliefs. So I think a lot of times we already know deep down what our purpose is, but we just haven't really been brave enough to pursue it because of maybe some messages that we got growing up. So let's say like you have always loved making art, but you always got told as you were growing up that like art won't make you money. And so you know, maybe deep down, <laughs> maybe it's under a lot of shit down there, but like you know deep down that making art is your purpose and your passion, but you also don't think that that is going to be a feasible way to make money. So you don't allow yourself to pursue it. Now, going back to the whole like taking a leap of faith and having faith that things are going to work out for you, you aren't ever going to be able to make money by doing your purpose or your passion if you don't ever try and if you don't ever take action on it. So really try and think about what some of the beliefs are around doing what you love and doing the things that are fun are for you because those could be subconsciously blocking you from actually doing them. And also for your purpose to manifest into a business that makes money, you actually have to take action on it. Now, along with setting the intention to finding your passion and your purpose, I think this also finding it really comes down to also the true inner belief inside of you that you have a purpose. Every single person on this planet has a purpose and it's not necessarily going to look like other people's. So this is kind of what I was talking about at the beginning is that like, I truly think that some people's purpose in life is to be a good mother. And maybe that's not, you know, being an Oprah or a Tony Robbins type of inspiring speaker and that's okay. Everything has a place and has a purpose. Like your passion and your purpose is serving the greater good even if you don't feel like it's huge. And this kind of leads me into my next thing because you might be thinking, well, okay, I know what that is, but that's never going to make me money. I'm never going to like be able to turn that into a business, which could be true, could not be true. But that is my final tip, I guess, that I would offer to you guys is that if you are trying to figure out what your passion and your purpose is, stop trying to think about your purpose as a way to make money. I think that when we go into it like that, there's just too much pressure. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. The video cut off actually on my last thing that I was saying, but what I was really getting at is the last, I think maybe most important point in finding your purpose out of all of this is to take the pressure off of turning your passion or your purpose into a business or turning it into a profit. I think when you're only pursuing your passion because you think it's going to make you money or you have a idea of what the outcome should be or could be, it's so much pressure and it actually takes the joy and the fun out of doing that thing just for the simple act of you liking it. <laughs> so it really defeats the purpose. So of course I want everybody to make a ton of money and I want whatever you make your business about, I want it to be something that you love 
but it doesn't necessarily have to be one in the same. So today I want you to just go do something that's really fun and makes you feel really good and expansive and let go of what you think the outcome is going to be. And just remember the way to make a big profit and the way to make a lot of money, especially online, is by helping a lot of people. But you cannot help a lot of people until you first go inward and figure out what you need and take care of yourself first and figure out the things that really build you up and bring you into your purpose. And then you can help so many people and that's how you make money. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, leave me a comment below and let me know that you like this, you know, mindset kind of woo woo type of stuff. And also be sure to hit the red subscribe button if you haven't yet and hit the little bell next to it so that you get notified every time I create a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.